Did you start this year with the best of intentions only to get swept up in the day-to-day -day operations and weeds? And maybe by the time you realized it, here we are already in the final stretch of the year and maybe you haven't made that much progress yet on your goals. And let's not even talk about your perhaps fallen by the wayside content. Welcome to an overpopulated club that I was basically once the chair of. In this video, you're gonna discover all the steps for designing, building, and setting up and using a dashboard in Asana so that you can set yourself up for progress and success in 2023 by using your time, energy, and resources maybe a little more productively. Welcome back to Your Content Empire, the YouTube channel dedicated to get helping you get more consistent and profitable with your content the easy way. I'm your host, Haley Dale, a content and sales funnel strategist obsessed with bringing you all the latest and greatest in content and marketing. When I first started my business back in 2014, I came out with a bang, if I do say so myself. I launched my course, I grew my list to thousands and became that go-to for content and content systems all within the first 12 months. And I hadn't even gone full-time in my business yet. I'm not saying this to gloat, but I am doing it rather to point out a downside to growing too quickly that I definitely experienced. My growing business was built on shaky, shaky ground because I didn't have the right processes in place to make steering my business in the direction that I actually wanted it to go, a sure thing. Pretty quickly, I found myself working nights, evenings, weekends without a day off in sight. And by year two, my business had become a struggle with a capital STR. The biggest thing missing was a way to really keep my goals and priorities top of mind. So something that would allow me to really step into and embrace uh, my role as the CEO of my business and a tool that'll help get me out of the weeds. I find it very, very hard to go between like working in my business and doing these nitty gritty tasks on a to-do list and stepping out and seeing things from like a 10,000 foot view. So AKA something to get me a tool that will help me get out of the weeds and into strategic thinking mode pretty quickly, AKA the only way to really build an intentional business that gets you closer to your vision. That is where this Asana dashboard system was born. It's a visual reminder about what you're working towards and how all the pieces of your business really fit together, like your projects, your content, your goals, how all of those things are like Jenga or Lego and how they fit together. But here, because here's a really, really hard truth to swallow, you know, time working only counts if you're working towards the right things. That was a hard, hard lesson that I had to realize. And that's exactly why I'm going to show you my own personal Asana dashboard, take you behind the scenes to help you also set up maybe something that works like this for yourself to help keep you on track and focused on the right things throughout 2023. So let's get started. Step number one is to design your Asana dashboard. Before you jump into building your dashboard, it's really, really important to take a moment, take a step back and think about about what you want this dashboard to look like first. What are the sections, the purpose, what the end result is basically going to look like. Just like you check a recipe, hopefully before baking a batch of cookies, you're going to want to prep your dashboard ingredients before too. So you're not needing to run out to the store and start from scratch. In this instance, ingredients equal sections or columns, the columns that you see in a Kanban Asana setup board. And you'll want to choose what sections, AKA columns that you want to include in your dashboard first. Here is a look at what I include in mine. Section number one are for my progress and my goals. I start with a list of the goals that I want to achieve in that year and have a space to add a status update to them so I can very quickly take a look at them at a glance and see what am I working on, what is my status or progress towards it, and what are the very next actions. Then what you want to do when you're setting up your goals is define the difference between your project goals versus your achievement goals. Project goals are usually binary, right? You reach them or you don't. These include things like writing a, writing a book, creating a course, setting up a sales funnel. They, you know, they're projects and have a set list of action items that are attached to them. On the other hand, achievement goals are usually some form of target that you'll need to track or measure to know if you've reached it. These goals include things like make a hundred sales of my course or book two sales calls per month. So when it comes to setting up this section by identifying and almost like treating these two goals, 
goals separately, you'll just start to be able to see what action items go along with them and how they tie into and support each other. I know that I found that distinction when I come to planning my goals really, really helpful in knowing that I kind of have a mix between some pro project goals and some achievement goals. There are some things to include in this column or section in each of those little task cards would be like the name of the goal, the title of the goal, the category, maybe what quarter you're going to work on them, a link to relevant folders or resources that support that goal or that you'll be going to often when you're working on that thing, your vision for what success looks like, and a measurement link for your achievement goals. Section or column number two is for your promotions. So in this section, you want to decide what you're going to be promoting or selling for each month of the coming year. Add in date ranges and don't forget to include your pre-launch campaign time. So this would be like in January, I'm launching my course. In February, I'm launching or promoting or focusing on a small product. Uh, in March, I'm focusing on my service package. So you might only have one offer in your business and that's totally fine. You can be promoting and selling the same thing all year long, or you might want to be intentional about kind of like alternating through them or doing a bit of a mix. So things to include in this section on each of those little task cards would be, you know, the name of the promo, your goal for the promo, a link to any relevant folders or resources, and a high level outline of maybe your promo plan and the important dates and milestones. Section three is for projects. So in section three, you're going to add your big projects. And usually these are determined by the goals that you set in section slash column number one. So I like to organize these, these projects quarterly, either by adding like sections for each of the quarters or like using a task card with maybe like a little label that says quarter one and then I'll put all those projects there quarter two then all those little projects there I'm going to show you this in a second here use task cards to assign action items this is going to help hold you accountable and keep you delegating for reviewing your progress on these projects in stand-up meetings either with your team or with yourself those weekly kind of check-in meetings where you run through all your goals and projects and just see like what am I working on next so you can decide, yeah, really what to work on next and what is the next priority. Things to include in the section on the little task project cards would be the project name, the related goal and category, the month or quarter where you're going to be focusing on this project, as well as folders and resources and subtasks and notes. You may also have a section in there for goals that you kind of work on or projects that you work on ongoing, right? So something like content is really an ongoing project and we're going to have a section here for content. So section slash column number four is for publishing AKA content. In this section, add your content bundles. So what are you publishing? What, uh, you know, what is that core piece of content for each week or each month or each biweekly period, depending on how often you're publishing. But I really like to center all of my content around what that core piece of content is. So what that blog or video or podcast is going to be. What I recommend here is to create your bundle template and duplicate this one for each piece core content that you're going to be related releasing. So here is an image of what my content bundle template looks like. You can see here that it includes like the workflow that I go through of putting every single piece of content that I put out together. So it starts with, you know, outlining, then writing it, then doing the promo copy, then filming the video. So it goes through step by step, all of the steps that I take to create that core piece of content and the accompanying supporting content like images and social media posts. The reason that I do this is create a template is so that I can just simply duplicate it and I don't need to write that to-do list every single time and for every single post. It makes staying on track much, much easier and helps keep me consistent. So some things you might want to include in your own content bundle task template would be the content topic, important links or weekly promos, the call to action for that post, an outline maybe, some subtasks, link to other related content, and definitely the folder where you're going to be housing all of those documents and files related to that piece of content. That brings us to section slash column number five, which is processes. So I like to add cards for my personal routines as the CEO of my businesses, um, as the, my, yeah, of my businesses. So my personal routines, my processes, and maybe my recurring meetings there too. Even though I like to have a separate ops manual for my other parts of my business and for offer delivery and things that I'm going to be delegating, I like to have a view of the strategic CEO routines that I follow on a regular basis. So here are some ideas of maybe some things to include in your own in that column. So for me, that is like, 
like my side CEO Friday routine. So that is where I'm going through my measurements. I'm looking at, I'm checking in with people. I'm checking in on progress. I'm checking in on our strategic priorities and our vision. So I'm really giving me myself that time and that space to really be high level in my business. You may also have things like your measurement process, your content planning process, your team meeting agenda, those types of things that you do to really steer and direct the business, as well as things to include would be like the relevant details and links, as well as the frequency and the recurring time that you're doing that. Our final section is section slash column number six, which is for people. In this section, set up different columns for your network and important people that you want to remember to touch base with or check in with regularly. These might be customers, clients, business besties, mentors, mentees, peers in your industry, etc. If you have a team, you could also include, include a section for them as well with details like their role, their tasks, their routines, a link to maybe their folders for assigning subtasks. So once you have this set up, we're ready to move on to step number two, which is building your dashboard. So now's the fun part, depending on what you're into, where you get to create the dashboard and see it in action. If you have taken your time in designing your dashboard ahead of time and thinking through intentionally what you want it to look like, setting it up is actually gonna be quite simple and straightforward. I'm gonna walk you through this in Asana. The first thing you're going to want to do is start by opening up a new project in Asana. So once you come to a fresh Asana, it might look like this, or if you're already using it, you'll have some projects already along the side here. So you'll want to come to this little button right here, which is to create a project. And we're going to start with blank plot project, and then we're going to give it a name here. And I like to call it like it might be, you know, 2023 CEO dashboard. I also like to add a little emoji here so I can easily find it when I'm scanning. I just look for the crown or whatever emoji you've chosen here for the side. Then the next thing that I do is I make it a board as the type, and then I click continue. Then I want to start adding tasks. So I go to the project and I'm ready to start setting it up. The next thing you want to do once you have your project and your board set up is to start setting up your board and start by setting up the columns. So what we'll do here is we're going to add in. So I've gone over the different sections that I like to have. Um, so I like to have my goals and progress. Then I like to have my um, promotions then I like to have my um, projects then I like to have my content or publishing schedule and then finally I have my processes and my people now the thing with people is I like to also set it up so I like to have a different column for each one so I will have my team then I'll have agency clients you can have your biz besties. Sometimes it's just helpful to keep them on separate tabs as well. So once you finish putting in all of your columns slash sections, now it's time to like start building this out. You can also add any extras here as well, but now is the time to start planning. So you might have put in your actual goals here, right? So you want to go, you know, goal name, and then you can put a description, you can put a link, you can put when you're working on it, you can put a range here, you can put who you're assigning it to as well as different tasks. Same thing with your promotions, you can put down here like, okay, so January, signature course. February, I'm gonna be promoting my agency package, so whatever that happens to be. And then finally on projects, this is where I like to say that I like to kind of separate things based on the quarter that I'm working on. Or what you could do here is you could just simply, you could have like different columns for quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. So that is another option as well, instead of just having one column or section for like all of your projects and goals. So just know that that is an option too. So if you're gonna do that, I like to create little labels in Canva to actually put in a little bit of there we go. Okay. So I've uploaded the image here and that means that it's going to create this little label and then underneath it, I can put, so I have my quarter one and now I can start putting my different projects or different 
you know, project A, project B, those sorts of things. And I would actually go and put like descriptions and put all the things that I'm doing here. And then under content, that's where I'm gonna put my content bundle. So I might have, you know, on um, my first blog post. So January <laughs> blog post one, but I would actually put like what the title actually is. Um, and then you'll put like the date that it's actually gonna be published. And then you can have your, and I would set up your content task card once for the first one with like your order of priority as well as like, you know, here's the title, date, promotion, CTA, URL, folder, whatever you want to have there as well as your subtasks. And then you, I would simply, as I create the next one, I would just duplicate my blog post or my video task or whatever it happens to be. Um, and then I would move forward with the next one. Even if you aren't going to be finishing out the build here, I find it helpful even to put a sample of each task in each column. So that way when it comes time to actually building your dashboard, which you might do like after a planning retreat or after like, you know, a staycation planning retreat or a week of kind of like doing an hour or two a day of your plan, like yearly planning, then this could be the final step is building your dashboard to keep you on track. Step number three is to start using your dashboard. Like any system, this is only really gonna make a difference in your business if you actually use it. I've been so, so guilty of setting up like really cool and complex systems and tools that I never end up using it only to have nothing more than wasted time to show for it. Creating a routine is the first step here. So your routine is all about figuring out how you're actually going to be using your CEO dashboard to its fully full potential, right? So here is how I personally use it, what my routines look like. At the beginning of each day, when I sit down at my desk to work, I open up my CEO dashboard and review it, do a quick, quick glance through before fully jumping into my day. I identify the processes and the tasks that I need to be doing for that day, and then I get started and stay focused. Next up is keeping your app dashboard updated. So it's important to get go into your dashboard periodically, not just like the glance through that you do on a daily basis, but really the like, I'm gonna keep it updated. What has changed? What needs to shift? What needs to be updated? So as you work through 2023 or whatever year you're doing this in, a thing or two is bound to change. You might plan a solo retreat to reflect and tweak your plans, or you might lock yourself away and think about changing course in some way. Way. Just know that's perfectly okay. This dashboard, you know, isn't really to lock you into any particular plan that you set up on January 1st, but to really make sure that you're being intentional when you do want to make changes. Changes are okay, but let's do it with intention rather than on a whim. So no matter what happens, don't let your dashboard get left behind. You can bring it along with you with the new plans. Here's how I keep mine updated. So on a weekly basis, I review my dashboard and update my progress on my goals, my content calendar, and my projects. I assign action items to my team for the coming week and myself. Then on a monthly basis, I review my board and add any new projects or content bundles to my board. I update my people column by adding in any new connections or any new team members. On a quarterly basis, I do a big, big review of the board and create my new quarter column with my projects and my action items. So now that you know how, are you ready to start setting up your own CEO dashboard in Asana? Designing your dashboard, setting it up, and actually using it is gonna give you the structure that I think you really need to have a productive, goal-smashing 2023. The key here is intentionality. Setting it up to be just right for you, right? Even though I've shown you how I set mine up, you can take that and make it your own so that it works for you. And then the key here is updating it and using it as the year progresses and putting it to use. So let me know in the comments, are you an Asana person or is there another tool that you prefer using for staying organized and on top of your tasks and to-do list? And with that, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to be the first to know when the next video goes live, hint, it's Mondays, uh, ring the bell. And until next time, here is to your content empire.